and welcome back this is your man warrior and this is going to be a video about the b1 battle droid now he's coming soon to a game near you he's going to be coming by way of marquee event so everybody should in theory be able to access him because you can use any team and you should have a team high enough to be able to get him so there's going to be an unlock at three stars if you complete the entire event depending upon how hard the event is but most marquee are pretty simple as far as the design philosophy of the B1, they basically want it to be like a hundred plus droids at one time. So that way you kind of have that look and feel of just this endless army of B1s coming at you. If you've seen the Clone Wars, obviously there's just an endless supply of these B1s. Now, the way this video is gonna work is we're gonna talk about the basics of the kits in this. We're gonna talk about the final abilities and we're also gonna go over a little bit of footage that they shared at the end so you can kind of see it in action and get its feel. But basically this particular character is kind of like the paper zombie in that you have to kill it a bunch but it's got a totally different feel with it now the b1 has basically two abilities that you can actually use and then two uniques the two abilities are a basic and a special but you might want to think of it as two basics and the reason is there's no cooldown on the special so you can choose to use either one whenever you want now the basic is called b1 barrage and it's going to say at its final text that it deals physical damage to a target enemy and if the target was target locked which is probably going to be the case with a droid style team all droid allies are going to recover five percent of their leaders max health and protection now where this comes in very important is when you're trying to regenerate health and protection for territory wars grand arena these are great defensive style teams because as you're trying to chew them down they're just regenerating that health and protection now Again, I don't know how the AI yet is going to utilize the basic versus the special. My guess is the AI will probably always defer to the special since it's always off of cooldown. But again, I don't know which is which. But the basic is for regenerating health and protection on the team. Now, the first special is called Blast Them, and it has no cooldown, so you can use it literally every time. And it says it will deal physical damage to all enemies. This is an AoE. Now, you got to remember who you're going against if you're going against a team that's going to counter you're going to take a lot of your stacks off prematurely due to the countering but if you're going against someone that's the teams that have been dazed and whatnot you're not going to have to worry about that but this deals damage to everybody inflicts target lock for two turns on the selected target so make sure you target whoever it is you want to have target lock and then he'll gain one stack of droid battalion for each other separatist ally. Now this is important. Everyone always wants to know, does it count himself? So the way it works is if it says gain one stack of droid battalion for every separatist ally, then it would count him. But because it says for each other, the word other is important because that means it does not include himself. If the word other is not present, then it would include himself. So when you're reading text in kits, just remember that that applies for everything such as R2D2 and other characters. Now, he will get basically if he's with four separatist allies, four additional stacks after using this AOE, and then he heals target other separatist allies for up to 50% health and protection because if he has a hundred stacks of battle meditation, which is what he starts at, you're going to get 50% health and protection. Now it dwindles, the regenerative properties dwindle with the stacks as they're reduced. So because this one does health and protection regeneration and target lock and damage, you definitely want to try to basically always use blast them because you're going to be getting the best bang for your buck. Now, he has a couple of uniques working in the background that are going to give him some kind of cool abilities. The first is called Roger Roger, and it says whenever another separatist ally uses an ability during their turn, the B1 is going to assist dealing 40% less damage. Now, this is going to be limited once per turn. So this is kind of like you know, when Zalbar goes in mission, gets to assist, something similar to that, but it's every separatist on the team, every time they go, regardless of whether they use a basic or a special, he's going to assist doing 40% less damage. Now, whenever another droid ally, so separatist and droid is gonna really come in key here, whenever a droid ally uses a special ability, 
B1 is going to gain 15% turn meter. So if they use any ability, he's going to assist. And if they use a droids use a special ability, he'll assist and he'll gain 15% turn meter. This should make him pretty fast and help him to be able to constantly be going and assisting and inflicting target lock on new characters each time he goes, as well as regenerating health and protection on the entire rest of the team, making it very difficult to kill basically anybody else. Now he has a second unique that is in the works also called Droid Battalion, and they wanted to give you a feel that you were going against you know, a hundred plus B1s and that you had that feel that you were rolling with an entire army. And so with B1, he's not going to be able to score critical hits and he can't be revived. But every time he dies, another one's going to come into his place. In fact, every time he's hit or debuffed, he's going to lose eight stacks. So it's basically equivalent to eight of these droids dying and then he can regenerate multiple droids every single turn based on the number of separatists that he has in his team. So he has no protection. He has at one health and he starts with a hundred stacks of this droid battalion and he can't be defeated or destroyed while he has it. Once all the stacks are finally gone, he's going to self-destruct and he's immune to dots or damage over time. So you can't just try to incessantly debuff him and have him basically basically kill himself through the dots never ending. He's going to be immune to the dots as well. So pretty cool. So uh, with this, this means that basically every time you debuff him, he's going to uh, cleanse. So it says uh, whenever B1 takes damage, they dispel all debuffs on themselves and lose eight stacks. At the start of B1's turn, they gain three stacks of droid battalion. So every time he takes a turn, he's going to gain three stacks and also can gain, you know, probably four, three, four, two, three, four, depending upon how many separatists more. So he can get probably around seven a turn. And if he's hit every turn, he gets eight taken away. So you can see how long with 100 stacks this could potentially be. Now, if you focus him down, you can kill him relatively fast in about nine hits. And if you don't, you know, totally ignore him, what's going to happen is he's going to get more and more stacks. And so if you ignore him, there is something built in to actually cause an issue. You see him as not a huge damage dealer or threat, but Droid Battalion, that buff that's over his head that determines how many stacks he's got, is going to say each stack grants B1 plus 2% offense. So at 100 stack, he's at plus 200% offense. And all Separatist allies will gain 0.5 tenacity and critical avoidance. So he's going to give them 50% potentially, 50% tenacity and critical avoidance right off the get. Now, if he is ignored, those stacks are going to grow into the 120, 130, 140, and you'll be giving the opposing team a ton of tenacity tenacity and crit avoidance. This is important because it's going to make it harder and harder to kill them, especially when if you ignore him, he's regenerating health and protection equal to those stacks as well. So you're going to make it or break it based on the number of stacks. So the first thing a lot of people are going to want to know is how in the heck are you going to mod him? Well, there's two things going at work here. He's going to assist a lot and he's also going to get a bunch of turn meter whenever droids use special abilities. So having him fast is going to help because the more turns he takes, the more he's going to be able to heal other people and the more he's going to be able to regenerate those existing stacks for himself. So this is super important to make him really, really fast. The other thing, if you note, is it says he can't be, he can't critically hit, which means that critical chance, critical damage, all of that's wasted. So all you're going to do is straight offense. So the way to mod him is going to be offense and speed with some potency. Potency is important because you want to do the target lock, but it's less important than speed and damage, bottom line. Now, speed and offense kind of conflict because they both require four slots to gain that bonus. So my suggestion is if you have offense mods with superior, really great 10, 15, 20 plus speed, go ahead and go an offense set and a potency set with potency, offense, and speed secondaries 
on that kit. And then if you don't have really amazing offense mods with secondary speed, do a speed set with a potency set, and then go ahead and get as much offense secondary, speed secondary, and potency secondary as you can. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at the footage because I'm pretty interested to see what they have as far as you know what it looks like and all of that. And I kind of want to walk through just how it looks and all of that. So let's go look at the footage. All right, so let's see what choices they make. If you notice, it looks like he's been hit once. He's lost eight stacks already for that first hit, but he has 92 stacks left. All right, you got to see that assist call. That was pretty cool. He lost another eight stacks. And let's go ahead and see what they use next. I'm guessing they're going to use a lot of specials to try to call those assists. You can see all the shots are coming from the background. Now look to the bottom right. You see three droids in the picture on the bottom right. This is going to be his, uh, you know, AOE that he can call. And actually you'll see three droids show up. This is a really cool animation. I think the whole point of this footage is to kind of showcase that animation. Look at that. Boom. Kind of cool. And target lock on the primary target, which is really cool. Every time they use their ability, there's that assist call. Probably not a ton of damage, but you can see that assist call's awesome. It also keeps everybody topped off with health and protection. If you notice, the rest of the team is not having a problem whatsoever with health or protection. Here goes the assist call again. Remember, pretty much always default want to use that special because it's always off a of cooldown. And you notice he's already back to 87 stacks of that. Love that call to assist. Just every time they're taking turns, he's getting those assist calls. The shots are coming from the background, and if he gets hit, you can kind of see he dies, and a new one kind of takes his place. Still a ton of stacks. And if you have a tank, here goes that assist. Boom, target lock applied. If you obviously have a tank to kind of protect him, you're going to notice that they're uh, going to have a hard time getting to him. And he's already back to 92 of those stacks, which is pretty awesome. All right. So again, target lock on the primary, which is awesome. And he's just assisting with every time they take a turn and all of their health and protection look great. Even the tank on the uh, on our side, Sunfac, looks really, really good. We get to call the assist once again. Boom. And there you go. Clear the board with that AoE. Not a huge amount of damage. And again, remember, this is not an optimal team. They do not have all of the reworks out yet for us to showcase. This is just them showcasing the stacks. Now, look, he's already at 92 stacks, which is crazy. And these assist calls are a lot. And remember... Uh, here you go. Yeah, taunt. So now you're going to protect him and all those assist calls just keep going. It basically makes everyone on the team hit more because he's going to constantly assist everybody as they go. And then he always gets to use his special when it's his turn, which is that a group of three that come out. And man, the rest of the team is going crazy. Here's his assist call. There'll be three of them now. Really cool animation. And he chose Sunfac. You can see Sunfac's protection regenerated. He had none, and now he's got 50% uh, protection back. Pretty awesome. So it brings about resiliency and damage. I think in an optimized team, this would be super, super annoying to have to deal with. Obviously, this is not optimal uh, footage, but it at least gives us a good idea of what it looks like, and it really makes me excited for the general Grievous rework. Look at that target lock, three of them coming out, and look at the stacks well over a hundred stacks on this particular character. Pretty insane. So, what are your thoughts of the B1 
Again, everyone's going to get him with the marquee. Remember the footage is less than par because he's going to be phenomenal once General Grievous comes out. I see him as someone you're not going to be able to leave alone. You're going to have to go after him hard, which is going to leave the rest of the team doing great. I think a natural counter is going to be counter teams such as Jedi and Rebels. And I do think that General Grievous's rework is probably going to address that. And so it's going to be exciting to see how all of this plays out. If you have any ideas, ideas about different team comp structures you'd like to see such as a target lock team and things like that leave them in the comments down below and as always keep your gaming on warrior out